And welcome everybody to another episode of the Animaniacast. up on the teacup ride. Hold on, let me eat more lollipops and hot dogs first. Hmm, I was thinking about the log flume. Oh, I love throwing up on the log flume. And welcome. Everybody once again to the Animated Cast. This is the podcast that reviews episodes of the animated television series Animaniacs, as well as other shows within the Rugerverse, such as Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky the Brain, and Freakazoid. And today we did it. Sound the alarm, sound the trumpet, sound, sound some stuff. We just got through the last episode of the Animaniacs reboot. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. And we're going to be talking about all the cultural references and gags and all that stuff. And of course, in the end, we're going to give this episode of the Animaniacs reboot a water tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me once again are my co-hosts. There's my brother Nathan. Oh man, now we can't have a helmet party. <laughs> and across the country in Georgia, there's Kelly. Hey y'all. Hey. Uh, we did it. Uh, like I said, I you know, some people may have thought it's, it was an impossible task, but we did it. We have just watched every episode of Animaniacs, and we are about to also give our thoughts on every episode of Animaniacs to date uh, with this episode. This is the episode 36 of the Animaniacs reboot, episode 10 of season 3, which includes a bunch of different segments, including... International Mouse of Mystery, Aliens Resurrected, Joe, The Stickening, Slappy's Return, and Everyday Safety, Giant Adirondack, Adirondack Chair. Uh, if someone were to ask you about this episode in just a few words, oh, geez, I don't know. What would you tell him, Nathan? Okay. Um, it's like James Bond meets... Aliens meets kangaroos meets uh, like candy and uh, squirrels and chairs. Wow. <laughs> Kelly, what about you? It had spinning teacups. It did. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, this is okay. At least this, at least it has this element for Kelly to keep her interested. And uh, guess which, guess which segment Kelly's going to be talking about today. Hmm. The teacups. Yes, the teacups. Longtime listeners of this uh, of this show will know Kelly is a fan of the teacups. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Just slightly. It's if you ever got if there were ever a teacup ride that was Spielberg themed, or well, Spielberg Yoda themed that played John <gasps> Williams music. <gasps> I think I think Kelly would just live there. I want it in my backyard. Yeah, exactly. That's something. You could, well, once you get a million dollars, once you become a millionaire, it will it right be in my backyard. backyard. Yep, exactly. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get to before we get to our discussion of all the episode. We got, of course, talk about the premiere date. This episode premiered with all the other episodes way back months and months and months ago. Over for us six months ago. <laughs> Back on February seventeenth of twenty twenty three, and so that's when a lot we of have episodes to, to watch. It's yeah, true. It's, it takes a uh, long time. It takes a lot. Give us a break, okay? Uh, but that's why we got to ask Nathan. Nathan, please give us our February fun facts. February seventeenth, I should say. Let's try it again. Nathan, mm-hmm. why don't you go ahead and give us our February seventeenth fun facts theme song? February fun fact seventeenth theme song. Mix up the words and then move them around. February 17th, fun facts theme song. That's the right way to say it. (laughs) (laughs) Very nice. Well, that's Um, the last theme. I can't believe that's so sad. Yeah, the final one. Yeah. It took so long to write it and everything. (laughs) Well, we'll have a new theme song for the Tiny Toons one. And I guess what's cool about that, of course, 
when we talk about Tiny Toons, is that mm-hmm. I don't think they're all premiering at once. At least I don't think they are. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. So, Does that ha- start next month or September? Yeah, September. September okay. 9th, I want to say. Look. Yeah, but I think it comes out like their... the next day on like HBO. So maybe it comes out the 10th on streaming, but then it'd be ninth on Cartoon Network or something like that. It's something, something goofy. And the, and yeah. the way that they're premiering them on HBO versus Cartoon Network is kind of weird where I think they're releasing a couple episodes on HBO or I'm sorry, Max or whatever you want to call it yeah. ahead of time. And then Cartoon Network is just doing one a week. We'll just have to. You wait get your see. news here first. You hear and, it first. We have no idea. Yeah, we know exactly what we're talking about. We're like, what's going on with this show? Oh, <laughs> Buster and Babs are re- not related or related. No, they are They're related. Yeah. They are. I saw yeah. the They're twins. I saw the trailer. They're related. definitely related. Yep. I I held my breath and thought, oh, maybe they changed it. Nope. <laughs> They're still nope. related. They're twins. Seems so. like it could have been an easy fix, but whatever, folks. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get to our uh, our facts about facts? the, sh- the, okay. the seventeenth. Okay. What do we got, Nathan? All right. So, uh, man, a uh, man. I went through and I was like, let me find the most interesting thing since it's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, we're scraping. So, we're, are we scraping the bottom of the barrel, or are we? No, I was like, I was like, I'm going to save these until Ooh. it's important. So here okay. we go. Uh, this is super interesting. The birth of Bonnie Wright, 1991. So. Very interesting. Who, who's uh, that? that was? Oh, she played uh, <laughs> Jenny Weasley in the Harry Potter movies. I watched the Pretty first good. one. I haven't watched the other one. I need to get oh, into okay. Harry. That's that's on my list. She's there. So uh, Jenny Weasley, born in 1991 on February 17th, and then in 1963, we've got the birth of Michael Jordan. Heard of him? Wow. Yeah, he's a basketball player. Or was <laughs> he was yeah he was a baseball player and, yes That's exactly right. That's what we all we all know him <laughs> as. Um and Daniel Lawrence Whitney was also born. Daniel Lawrence Whitney, do you know who that is? That is that... Larry the Cable Guy, nineteen sixty three, same age as Michael Jordan. See who would win in a basketball fight between those two. Um, hey, and there was some space things in this one. We got aliens. We had an asteroid. Um, NASA in 1996 uh, sent out, a, started the Discovery program um, and shot the near Shoemaker spacecraft, uh, lifted off on its first mission ever to orbit and land on an asteroid. And that asteroid was called like Euro. 433. 433 Euros? Euros? How many euros does an asteroid cost? What? 433 euros. That's what I was like, it's so not confused. that bad. No, it's a E R O S, so <laughs> Eros. But when okay. I was I was like, is that an abbreviation for money? Like why are they throwing that into there? <laughs> well, very good. It's go- uh, I- Eros is Cupid. Yeah. Hey. I thought it was it some is- sort of Greek or Roman thing. Yeah. So I guess um there's four hundred and thirty two other ones. They're just like, oh, just- <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of asteroids. You know those space people with all their <laughs> with their they yeah. love their Greek and Roman mythology. It's I think it's part of the thing. If you're gonna get into astronomy, you have to study uh everything about <laughs> mythology. Nerds. Exactly. Nerds. I love mythology. I, I do it's nerds. So cool. I am a nerd. What do you think? There you know, I think we talked about it a few times, but I went to when I went to Chicago over the the summer. Uh, they we went to the planetarium and they had a, a video all about the the tenth planet or the ninth planet that we don't know exactly where it is, but we're it's somewhere because we right. can see that it's still can't believe they haven't found it yet. I know it's somewhere in our solar system that they think it's bigger than Pluto, but we just don't know where it is because it has such an orbit that. It's it's hard to find, I guess. It, it's years yeah, it's so far long. away, and I don't know. I'm guessing we like we know it's there because of the gravitational pull it has right. on the things. But exactly. So there's another planet. So if you're, uh, hey, you don't start keep studying those uh, Greek and Roman gods because we still got another planet out there to name somewhere. Go find it, folks. Study your mythology. Pluto don't, don't don't let the internet name it. Oh yeah, please. Planet McPlanet face or something. 
Yeah, that would isn't be. That, uh, isn't that than... what happened? Some like the internet named a boat, and they they named it like Boaty Boat Face or something. I yeah. don't remember that, but that sounds hilarious. Okay, yeah, it's it's something like that, <laughs> and so it, it it became like a meme or something. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the history about it, but oh, memes the the epitome of humor, right there. Okay, well, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to our discussion of today's episode. And we're, of course, going to start with the segment that happened before the credits even rolled. And that is International Mess. Brad, Brad DePrima and Brian Polk. And it was directed by Matthew Yang. Kelly, why don't you tell us what basically happens here in International Mouse of Mystery? Okay. Well, um, first of all, there's a lot of writers that wrote <laughs> this piece. I kind of made me wonder. I don't did... know if I've ever seen so many names on on. The writing credits. That's, that's fascinating. Were they trying to just just give a lot of credit to all the writers who had worked on the show, basically? And I don't know. Just Maybe they all contributed was, something. I. It's just one cool. line in this. Each gave a song in the. You know, hey, I will. The thing about these songs, you do get uh, residual rights off of songs. So, yeah. So if they each contributed like a line or two, eh, little, royalties, so pennies, pennies each on each little one that's downloaded on Spotify. There you go. Very cool. <laughs> okay, so um, it's kind of like a James Bond um, inspired piece. The brain is trying to uh, create a, a pitch for a spy adventure thriller, and obviously it's going to be kind of like James James Bond or you know Austin Powers a little bit. Um, and he wants Warner Brothers to to make it into a movie. Pinky sings like this theme song, and well, it's not really a theme song, but uh, pitch song, trailer song, <laughs> and um, I, it, that's really about it. I mean, it just kind of feels like a the opening credits of a James Bond movie, a little bit. Yeah, at the, at the end of it, of course, they you know he tries to say, okay, let's send this off to be the new James. What's his face? But uh, Warner Brothers passes on it. So then the brain says. Now where am I going to find a profitable yet endlessly repetitive formulaic rebooted franchise that relies on just a handful of tired characters? And of course, that's when Pinky swipes on the iPad and goes right to the theme song. So, hearty har har. Um, so when it comes to references, well, like Kelly was saying, obviously it's the, you know, you got kind of a James Bond or maybe an Austin Powers with the whole – instead of saying International Man, it says International Mouse of Mystery. Uh, the There is uh, – Edwin is in this playing, I guess, an odd job kind of character. I'm not really versed that well in James Bond films. It does it, – I do want to watch uh, more of the classic James Bond films. I've only seen – from Russia with Love, I think, and maybe some of Goldfinger, but I've never been a huge James Bond person. I've only seen one or two of the Daniel Craig films, I think, actually, even, and only one or two of the James... Uh, who's, who's before? Um, uh, Pierce him. Brosnan? Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, I've only seen, like, a couple of those films or something. I, I, I've always liked James Bond, but it's not like I have to watch James Bond. There's just so many of them, you know? So it's, you know, you take it or leave it, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. You know what you're getting. Uh, I will say that I felt it was kind of sad that, I don't know, they're, they're mentioning that this is a, a tired re- rebooted, a formulaic rebooted franchise that has a, that relies too heavily on a handful of tired characters. I don't know what kind of commentary that is on the reboot itself. Uh, it doesn't seem like a very f- nice thing to say about the the show that you're you've been working on, <laughs> but uh, I kind of agree that it over it did have an over reliance on obviously the Warners and Pinky and the Brain. Uh, well, they're the know. most popular ones. They are. That's true. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. What did you guys think about this this opening segment, Nathan? What did you think about it? Um, I thought they were making uh, another reference to our 
fan theory that the Warners are Time Lords because <laughs> the most repetitive formulaic <laughs> rebooted franchise is Doctor Who, obviously. <laughs> that is that relies yeah. on just a handful of tired characters and you just recast the characters. It's so easy. So therefore, that would be what <laughs> Brain was talking about. And then by Pinky then showing the Animaniacs or then concluding that, yes, the Animaniacs are indeed Time Lords and it, it confirms the theory Doctor <laughs> Who. There you yes. go. That so was my thought. So, so, you, then, so in, in actuality, they were actually referring to Doctor Who and not yes, Animaniacs. Yes, they weren't okay. talking about it. They were talking about Doctor Who and then showing the Animaniacs. And that shows us, yes, they are Time Lords. So ah, you that know, was they my have, thoughts. On. They have so much Doctor Who. Like on Pluto TV, they have 24-7 Doctor Who playing. And it's like classic Doctor Who. I've tried mm-hmm. to watch some of those old episodes and I know that there's fans that love those corny old episodes. They are rough to get through. It's yeah. it's the there's yeah. no money. It was, they I had mean, no money. Just... They had like, <laughs> it, it, and that way it's kind of fun to watch because it, it's so B movie kind of stuff going on. But uh, mm-hmm. boy, oh boy! I mean, uh, it's even less than a B movie because the B movie has some budget, right? Exactly. Like this is gonna have this is a television show that they have to like right. So they're going to reuse the props from the last episode and we, you know, like whatever, whatever they <laughs> exactly. Let's go to this. Let's go to an, another planet. Okay. Though this planet uh, has castles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh just, just like England. How weird. Okay. Well, uh, never yeah, mind about that. Okay. <laughs> kind of looks like earth. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, a galaxy is full of British people. <laughs> they all have the accent, everything too. It's great. Yeah. This one just looks like a movie studio stuff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't feel as bad now. They weren't talking about the Animaniacs at all. They weren't yeah. talking about Doctor Who. Okay, haha. Take that, Doctor Who. Um, Ooh, I don't know. Burn. What did you now, Kelly? You you didn't really see much to this, I guess. But do, did you see anything in this <laughs> the first part that you liked? Well, I I was multitasking, so I was playing Emoji Blitz on yes. my phone while I was watching it. Um. I I thought the song was kind of cute. Um, Rob does do a very good job of singing his pinky. In yeah, this. yeah. I that's that's kind of what I took from it. I I thought that was cute. All right. I thought of James Bonding when I was watching it. I was like, oh yeah, James Bonding is a thing. Never watched or listened to an episode of that, but the podcast James Bonding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, Maurice Lamarche was in an episode. So there you go. You have to yeah. go back and listen to that one at least. Jane, oh, I um, I forgot, but Maurice is going to be a Dragon Con. So oh, hey. um, I did put in a request to interview him. Um, I, I, I've done it before, but I don't, again, I don't know if he'll be doing interviews or anything. So yeah, you can't, we could just talk to him about a book or something. I don't know. Has he, you could just go, you <laughs> can just you go doing? up to his table and just say, Hey, I'm Kelly from the Animani cast and just say hi. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I, I can yeah. do that. I can. Slip him five bucks, though. Just say, hey, thanks for saying. I'm not, not going to do that. Um, <laughs> but if y'all have any questions, um, YouTube, it, not the audience, because they, will, no, because they won't let, let, hear it before then, so you can exactly. take this out. But but if y'all have anything you want me to ask him. Ask um, him if he, if he remembers us and if he likes us. Okay. Yeah, do you like me? <laughs> hi, I'm, hi, Maurice. Okay. If he doesn't remember us, I feel really bad. No, he would. I'm <laughs> sure he remembers. This. I have He's his personal email. Times. I could bother him. And, you know. There you but go. But still, yeah, it would be nice to ask. I just want to know if he remembers us. <laughs> do you remember sure us? Does. And do you like us? That's the two questions. Nathan Follow wanted up. to ask. I learned long ago: don't ask questions that you might not like the answer to. Oh no! So. no. <laughs> I want to know. Oh no! Uh, by the way, uh, Futurama with Maurice Lamarche great season so far really loving it mm. and uh he he does a fantastic job he really does anyway that's a reboot right no it's just a continuation it's a i mean continuation. It's, uh, yeah it's a reboot in the sense that it's back up again but it's oh not like they, stop, a, they stopped it for a long time or a while yeah or like a, yeah like i went on hiatus or, uh, went on hiatus three times or something yes. you know oh. but this last one was like a long hiatus. But I was where... just watching the episode last night, uh, and I was like, man, this show is just like, it didn't skip a beat. It just is mm-hmm. right where it needed to be before, and I just love it. It's just so, so funny. 
Um, it's had some really good season finales though too or series yeah, finales no, where, where they would be no like, other show. like oh that is a perfect series finale yes. they don't need to do any more episodes ever again that's fine and then like oh huh, unlike like, some yeah. shows i might watch that have se- series finales that make me upset and we'll get to that later in today's episode well let's go <laughs> ahead <laughs> yeah, series finales all right speaking of bad season finales okay uh well then we get into our uh theme song and everything and of course it gets to the variable verse of 90s video gamey 90s video gamey 90s video gamey shows kind of like a uh i don't know kind of looks like, like the super ralph? nintendo yeah ralph yeah. and wacko and that did make me think oh yeah we need to review the animaniacs video games at some point yeah i mean we it's haven't a thing done that just gotta like you gotta play it or something it takes do. Long there's a, there's to... been a few games and i just need to kind of figure out the best way to do that you know do we just do we do live streams? Do we post? I, I don't know. Maybe people out there have some good ideas. Do you have some good ideas? How should we review the yeah. the thing? Should we just play it and then tell tell you all what do we it. think? Of the, I, I don't think own, I have it. I don't own any video game consoles. See, and that's the other thing. How are we like none. Kelly involved? How, how's Kelly <laughs> going to be able to talk on this thing? I mean, I think I, I have I, a SNES Mini that has a game on it. I think. Yeah, but how we? Get, yeah, you well, have, I I do have a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo somewhere in my storage unit. But, hey, um, so we can all play this NES version somewhere. Of I don't have a Super Nintendo. I see. We got this is our problem. We got to figure out the problem. We got to figure out this thing. How we, we got to figure out get, the problem before we, we can even figure, figure out the, out the solution. <laughs> Gee, there's so many different problems. So many different things. Okay, well, <laughs> but we will uh, maybe do that at some point. There's also, of course, the GameCube. Slash PlayStation game as well, which I did play and I like. So there's 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 stuff out there to talk about that's classic Animaniacs essentially that uh, we'll have to get to somehow once we figure out how to do it. Once we mm-hmm. figure out the problem, then we can figure out the solution because we haven't quite even <laughs> figured out what the problem is. Well, let's go ahead and get. It's to us. It. It's we're us. the problem. <laughs> All right. Well, it's me. Go- <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. Okay. Okay. Taylor it's Swift. Oh my Please. god. <laughs> Well, let's go to get to Aliens Resurrected. And Aliens Resurrected was written by Lucas Crandles and Timothy Nash. It was directed by Brett Varon. And um, I got to mention this because I thought the animation on this was kind of looked different and weird. Uh, it's animations by Digital Emation and Giant Ant. And uh, I thought there were some really cool moments in it uh, with the animation. All right. Well, Nathan, why don't you tell us what happens here in Aliens Resurrected? All right. Well, uh, so the uh, Yakko and Dot are like asleep, I guess. And they uh, wake up and they find that Yakko has been up all night. Uh, He's actually been up till since Tuesday. And it's like Sunday or something. I don't know. And he's he's got strings all over the water tower and he uh apparently thinks that aliens are real um yeah i mean come on there's never been an alien in uh an animaniacs episode (laughs) except for one episode one time (laughs) yeah just (laughs) forgetting all the other (laughs) but uh when yago had to sing about uh the way uh about everything on earth or something who tell us everything about humanity or something. So he's saying about everything. Um, well, these aliens are back. They're all purple. They got big eyes. They got a bunch of eyes. Um, and they're going to take over earth and destroy it because humanity is nasty. Very nasty. Based on your informative song, the council has determined all the inhabitants of earth are nasty. Very nasty. That's right. But uh, to stop them, Yakko is going to sing another little song about why uh, humanity, about humanity's wins or something. Just some of humanity's wins. And he goes through it with, with the help of Dot and Wacko. They talk about uh, different uh, cultural victories that we've had in the arts and in uh, science. All these uh, different victories that have made things that are uh, good for humanity and why we should not be destroyed. Confucius, the Buddha, and Abraham Lincoln, Plato and Sun Tzu, they got people thinking. Austin and Shelley, those three Bronte sisters, Kurosawa, Casablanca. And don't forget Twister. Elvis and Freddie Adele when she sings. These are a few of humanity's wins. 
the aliens don't seem impressed except one of them has something in his eye or he's um you know thinking about a dead dog or he's got allergies Aww. from his his old dog that he was allergic to or so you were crying but about your pet no it's just that i was allergic to my sweet dusty and just being reminded of so your eyes got watery at the memory of an allergy no i give it up pal something or you know what it turns out he's just he's just sad because you know twister was a good movie after all (laughs) yeah so they decide to not destroy the earth but if uh if they find out that people are being nasty then they're gonna come back and that's why the warner's like oh they're gonna be back unless we stop doing bad things so maybe the warners won't do any more bad episodes and then they will never be back (laughs) <laughs> yeah they won't be back sorry <laughs> as soon as I saw that I was like they'll be back and I was like no they won't <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so we're definitely going to see them again aren't we yep yep. let's go ahead and talk about the cultural references I mean there's a lot I mean it's mm-hmm. every every verse is a is a different cultural reference there's a lot yeah. of cool historic figures that are brought up the wiki brings up Ruth Bader Ginsburg and David Bowie, but that aren't even mentioned in the song. All right, so let's look at the let's look at this. We got uh, Frida Kahlo. We got a bunch of different animator, not animators, artists, but they do mention animation as well as a, mm-hmm. as a great thing. And then they mention some great thinkers, uh, Petra, the Taj, uh, the Three Gorges Dam. See, I never even heard about this stuff. I think that's what I should point out. Stuff I don't know what it's talking about. Three Gorges Dam, never heard of it. Large Hadron Collider? I don't know. Oh, the Hadron Collider. Hadron, oh yeah. (laughs) I should rephrase (laughs) that. Reading, never heard of it. (laughs) The Three Gorges Dam is a a hydroelectric gravity dam that spans in uh, China. Oh, okay. Uh, They did mention, uh, Dot mentions uh, some female authors. The Bronte sisters, uh, Jane Austen, and uh, Mary Shelley. Uh, and gosh, there's just, there's a lot. There's Elvis and Freddie Mercury. It, it just goes on and on. I mean, it's, there's a lot of great stuff. But it, the aliens, of course, try to mention the, the bad things, but it, you know, they can counteract most of them. The only thing was, uh, in fact, they just basically say, give humans a chance. Give us all a chance. The only thing that was a little confusing at the end of this was why they were out of breath to me at the end there. <sighs> I'm like, it really didn't seem that fast paced of a song. And they didn't really seem to be moving around. Whereas, uh, we, I th- it was, even though I didn't really like a brief history of history because, which this song is basically a, a follow up or a sequel to, mm-hmm. um, a brief history of history is a much faster. Ace. Almost yeah. more upbeat song, <laughs> even though this is a more positive message. It seems like the other one has a, a tempo. It's a little, I don't know, a little better. Um, but I actually, uh, that's that's about all the, the references I could think of. Uh, I was I was uh, you know a little confused, like when Nathan was pointing out they've never seen any aliens before, and I immediately thought when they said aliens, I immediately thought of Yoda. From space, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was me thinking too, of Yoda. Me too. Like, I, I well, was, I always think I always think of Yoda, but <laughs> yes. you know, that specific Yoda. Yeah, from that yeah. episode. That's such a funny episode, and it's just like that's when I think Animaniacs and Aliens. That's what I go to. Not these things that it's uh, uh, the gentleman who does the voice. He's the guy who does that. You know, the epic movie trailer voice guy. I believe what's this guy's name? He's uh He's uh, uh, John Bailey. Very nice guy, but i not a big fan of him doing both voices of the aliens because I don't think he has enough variation in his voice, honestly, for for the two of them. I mean, I guess that's kind of the point, that they're aliens and they sound the same, but I'd like them to sound a little, di- a little bit different or a little sillier. What are some things in this? Because I already mentioned a lot of stuff that was mentioned but what are some things that you might have liked uh kelly let's start with you well you already mentioned it but i, I really thought it was funny when when the one alien was asking the other like so you're you're reacting like that because you have it 
you're allergic to the memory of your dog or base, basically <laughs> that whole conversation was kind of funny because he, he just kept bluffing his way through it. And the guy was like, wait, but no. So now you're saying this. I mean, he was really just getting it at the real issue. I mean, he just wasn't buying any of it. Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> Nathan, what do you think? Um, I liked when they're trying to figure out if it was a good thing or not, whether they're going to be uh, taken into the ship because, you know, they're going to be uh, tortured or whatever. But it's also going to be VIP, and that's good. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, and they're going to get partial anesthetics. Uh, yes. or, you know, so. um, and then it was fun seeing uh, Meatball Man, I guess. Apparently, uh, Ralph likes to wear costume because he used to be rich. Uh, was that the beginning of this season? Yep. <laughs> Seemed like rich forever for ago. half an episode, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess Scratch and Sniff was in this, right? And, and yeah, Nora never woke up. I guess. Nora so, slept I the know. entire She's... time. They did not have to pay her a dime <laughs> in this yeah, last episode. Like, um, well, animator, uh, and that's hot. yeah. I don't. I never really thought of brief history of history portrayed humans in such a negative light but i guess it kind of does i mean it really does focus on you know even though it talks about the uh the whole history of like the big bang and then but it does talk a lot about how humans have messed up a lot of stuff um uh, i don't know it's it, it's kind of an interesting i think uh maybe commentary on how the reboot itself was kind of uh perhaps a little snarkier and meaner than it necessarily could have been. Whereas the original series may have been a little bit more optimistic and positive and more of their songs where it, where you didn't get a bad impression of the subjects that were being discussed. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to really say more about this cartoon other than I honestly, for the first time, I don't, re I did not remember these aliens. I was just like <laughs> dot. I'm drawing blanks. I got nothing. It was so forgettable. Those aliens are I, like, I know I saw them, but did I just see them in the trailer? Like, where did I see these aliens before? Um, mm -hmm. I did not like a brief history of history. I remember the song that Yakko sang it. I remember, you know, all that, but I don't remember the context of why they he weren't was really it. necessary for that episode. Yeah, it's just like they they're very they're very limited in that because it's like they're to introduce the song and then the song's done like all right bye right uh, so for wacko like, to be like aliens and like they're real and they crashed here and i'm like they did what happened i don't remember any of this what happened and so really when they were t I, I was getting confused with the pinky in the brain of it because i think in that same episode there was they also met like lauren lapkus which was an alien or whatever right. you know, like and, and then there was also that other reboot episode where they dealt with that alien with the that looked like an elephant seal thing in mm. the in the woods kind of yeah or something. yeah that's it was just so, kind of so they've seen yeah. aliens and of course and, and of course they saw and had a huge interaction for a long time uh with them on that uh but on yoda yeah with yoda with space probed i so yeah i it, i had i had issues with this Oh, uh, the animation one. was fun again, or at least different. yeah. But the I animation did look cool. <laughs> the animation yeah. did look cool. I did like both like, the okay, cool. Both the Warners kind of the the way they were stylized and the move their facial expressions looked cool. Mm -hmm. Yakko had a really good uh, moment in this one that really I think worked. About this whole end of the world thing you're planning, any chance you could uh, not? Uh, but overall, it just kind of was like meh. At the end of it, like, okay, next. <laughs> yeah, I want to be more educated. I'm always, like, want to learn more from things. And this mentioning things is I'm like, oh, yeah, but tell me what that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I love the stylistic yeah. look of the Warners and all the people that they were talking about. Um, it's definitely the highlight. Mm -hmm. But the song itself wasn't even... I can't remember the tune yeah. even. I mean, it's it was to... Uh, these are a few of my favorite things. Favorite things, things to, in yeah. a sense... I mean, they they kept saying these are a few of humanity's wins. wins. So it's it's that that part of that definitely was an homage. Yeah, which I think they did that better in the other. Um, what was that episode that they already did? The Bills are alive. The, the sound then, of Warners. 
Yeah, is that what the... Yeah. <laughs> well, they also did it in The Hills Are Alive with Big Rocks and Boulders. <laughs> yeah. With and, igneous rocks, <laughs> sedimentary too. Yeah, see? That's all good. And that's just, <laughs> I love that's, that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, yeah. I've they, seen that sometimes. I go around the house. <laughs> I love they that did little the, segment. They did the song When I Am Afraid. That was the... The other version of yes, favorite it, things, right? And and that was of course in the Sound of Warners, uh, yes, right there. Paul Rugg is a huge Sound of Music fan, so he he uh, he likes he likes his uh, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, and he likes the Sound of Music. So there you are. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and move on to Joe. So Peggy, how's Joe doing? Hi, Mom. Hey, listen, can you bring home the leftovers from the party tonight? Sure, sweetie. Joe was a story by Katie Rice. It was teleplayed by James Butler, directed by Katie Rice. And it's a pretty simple plot right here. It's a bunch of uh, Australian animals. And uh, there's a kangaroo and a platypus and, I don't know, some other ones. (laughs) And you could hear this other... this. uh, kind of voice in the distance or something. And the m- mom kangaroo ducks her head under the table and uh, pops her head into essentially her, her son's room. Her son is looks older than she is and is playing video games. And he's like, asks her for, you know, I don't know what you want, food or something like that. Uh, she goes, all right, I'll be right there. And she pokes her head back up. She, it turns out that her, her pouch has taken up the is basically just the table. It's they're just basically putting a tablecloth on top of her pouch. It's so full, and he she just says he's a late bloomer, and that's the end of that wonderful sketch. And I had to do this because that's a Joey. Yeah, that's why I had to talk about this one because I was represented. Uh, what did you guys think about this uh, Australian short? Uh, Kelly, um, let's start. Let's start with Kelly. What do you think, Kelly? Okay. Um, I don't okay. know. It was, okay, let's it go was to so Nathan. short. It was so short. <laughs> like, I don't. I didn't get much from it. I, either way. All right, Nathan. What did you think? I'm just very proud of you for finally coming out as a baby kangaroo. I know. <laughs> well, you feel represented. I try to keep it low key. Um, I thought there might have been a reference to Indiana Jones. Oh, with Wait, the Doctor Jones. Yep. Yeah. At the very beginning, they say Doctor. I guess some one of the kids is going to be a doctor. So they're like, "Oh, so Doctor Jones." Doctor Jones. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It could be. You yeah. cheat, Doctor Jones. Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> I was like, oh, um, yeah. I, I, that was the um, um, what is it, a platypus? I think is what that one was, um. and. I was like, oh, maybe uh, platypuses are called Jones or something. I'm like, no, they're called Puglies. Well, I just learned something. All right, cool. Are Which you serious? Like, yeah, I think they're called Pugly. And I'm like, oh. that's funny. Um, and both koalas and kangaroos, both of Joey's. Joey's, yeah. Basically, if it's a mar- most marsupials, I think, are called babies are but called Joey's, I think. I'm not quite sure what the other animal is there. It looks kind of like a, a bat. Or a mouse, or something. It's maybe it's like a mole rat, or something. I don't know. It's mm. kind of a weird. I didn't look um, close enough to him. All I know is a bunch of animals like, around a table. Like Joe, that's my name, Joey. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> drop out everything else. Like, <laughs> don't even care that one of like all these successful kids. Yep, are having nope. Um, I Harry uh, well, I thought Doctor this... Jones. Yeah, <laughs> I thought this. Cartoon was uh, it was very short. It almost felt like I was just reading a Sunday comic strip. It was a very simple punchline, and it wasn't much to it. It was just kind of felt like, yeah, I could see this as just something I would read in the Sunday comics and have the same about reaction to it, where I just go, hmm, <laughs> nod mm-hmm. my head, smile, and move on. And there we go. Yeah, Maybe. the only Sunday comics that ever made me laugh was Fox Trot. And Calvin that was and Hobbes for me. I love mostly Calvin and because. Uh, Jason, I think is his name. He, he's a big geek, and so he, yeah. like, I cut out from the newspaper strips from Fox Trot where he's talking about young Indiana Jones. <laughs> That's right. I remember you posted that one recently about how upset he was that the show was canceled or something like that. Yeah, right? that's from my scrapbook. Yep, yep. And 
Yeah. They don't make comics like they used to. But then again, I don't read comics like I used to. So maybe mm-hmm. they do. Far Side, that was for me. Far Side and Calvin and Hobbes. Just give me those. That, that stuff was. I used to buy every Calvin and Hobbes book I could find. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I, guess, I should say it's yes. called a puggle. A puggle. Oh, puggle. That's puggle. so cute. It is so yeah. really cute. All right. <laughs> well, let's move on to the sticky Teacups. <laughs> the sticking. The sticking was written by uh, Eric Branscombe and Jess Lacker, and it was directed by Brett Barron and Kelly. Go ahead, tell us what happens in the sick the sticking, otherwise known as teacups. There's teacups. Okay. Um. So they're at an amusement park, and um, Dot sees these spinning teacups. You know, if, if you go to Disney, it's the Mad Tea Party, which I am absolutely obsessed with. I mean, like, I, I collect stuff related to the Mad Tea Party, so I am obsessed. Dot wants to go on that, and they don't, which, that's my life. I Maybe people will go on it once with me, generally, but, like, the one time I rode it 12 times in one day, I have, at least half of those were all by myself, but that's fine. Because I don't ride roller coasters, so that's what I do, is I spin in the teacups. So um, they didn't want to go, and so they were going to split up. But Wacko, I mean, he, he's his usual self, and he's thinking, thinking about his stomach, and he gets, like, this huge lollipop. And then he gets stuck to Dot's head, and, and it's a huge lollipop, and they can't get it off. <laughs> no fair! Yeah, more of a carnival. Your lollipop is stuck on my head! Your head is stuck on my lollipop! And then it it just it's so sticky, like everything else uh, gets stuck to it. And then eventually Yakko and Wacko get get stuck. And um, but Dot is is focused. Uh, she she is a person character of of singular focus and and drive. And she wants to ride the teacups, uh, which I I relate I relate so hard to that. And um, <laughs> so she just like wraps it all up with tape. And, you know, kind of puts everybody and all the things in one little secure little package on her head. One for the teacups, please. Excuse me, I'm not great at talking to girls, but should I tell you that there's an entire lollipop stuck in your hair? And a woman and some garbage and a pigeon and two, maybe are they dogs? And then um, she gets on the teacups. And and that is me on the ride. Like, wee, wee and just spin and spin and spin. <laughs> and, um... She, she's just having the time of her life and then while she's spinning stuff even more stuff uh gets stuck to the lollipop and then eventually it's spinning so fast that there's a tornado and you get sort of a wizard of oz homage with things kind of like floating around outside outside um in in the the tor- in the midst of the tornado and um but then the tornado gets so strong and then everything else nearby is sucked into it. And we s- we hear the song about the whippoorwill and then we see a clown. And the whippoorwill whippers in the wind. The wind can't whip her back. Oh, nice and chubby baby. Ah, clown! The lollipop turned tornado basically is now a black hole and it sucks up everything. Um, the Warners, the studios, Burbank, all the, the characters you see. Um, oh, uh, Starbucks and Mindy. C- Cindy. 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 <laughs> There's Mindy Starbucks, and Buttons. <laughs> Starbucks and Cindy. Yes. Um, they get sucked up and uh, then... At the whole universe is is sucked into this big black hole. And um, then Dot says, uh, Talk about going out with a big bang, huh? She's lost, like, the fur or whatever on her head. Hair. Somehow the flower still stayed on, so that was good. At least she had her flower still. <laughs> Uh, but there we are. There's our there's our stickening right there. Uh, there's obviously some references to the teacups. The teacups, yes. 
Mr. Skullhead's shown in it, so that oh, was Oh, that's right. Cool. He was like at the ticket counter or something. Yeah, just like as a fortune teller machine, so he's just kind of there. And I I, I guess I, I did not... Oh, wait, no. Mr. Scratch and Sniff... Doc, Mr. Scratch and Sniff. Please, he's a doctor. Dr. Scratch and Sniff is seen in his bathtub again, uh, I guess, it, which for me, yeah, it's just a carryover from the previous segment. The, there's a lot of other stuff you see from the the you know the other ones you get the you get to see the gnome again you, obviously you mentioned Starbucks and Cindy and um, that's pretty much it uh, what did you uh, guys think of this uh, Nathan let's start with you oh, they had another reference to Meatball Man I another saw. I know it's a lot of Meatball Man's one in this yeah one. this is a it's big stuff um, yeah it was fun um, I like it reminds me of Disneyland. Because there's a log plume ride. <laughs> and um, I wanted to say that uh, I don't know. It's not really recycling to eat old gum. It's more reusing. Um, it's a difference because if you were to recycle, you'd be turning it into something else. And you're just using it at the same thing as you were before. Ah, a day at the amusement park. The rides, the prizes. The gum stuck to various surfaces. You know you can get that fresh. It is fresh. What's more relevant than recycling? The, I felt bad for the bird. I guess we'll never see that bird again because it died. Yeah, I, um, I thought that was kind of a little far to show like, okay, it looked like it died. And then I thought, well, maybe it's just, just an exhausted, disgusting pigeon. And then, no, they actually showed that, no, it actually, that spirit is up. <laughs> it It's dead now. But I mean, I guess like everyone died, right? Because uh, we'll get the, into it. <laughs> I mean, like with the whole sucking into the thing. That's the other true. Thing, like, yeah. Going out with a a big bang, I would say this is more like going out with a big suck. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, because nothing. Uh, There's no. What, there was no big bang at the end, wasn't? No, it did bang. It, it bang. bangs as well. Yeah. Um, Sucked it in, um, banged it out. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to see yeah so yeah apparently there's there's a comic book of meatball man that i'm just like the guy was reading the um, pickup booth so i was like they, so even yeah. beyond that meat melt that the the running gag of meatball man in the reboot is something that the the folks working on the show really like that <laughs> uh so i'm glad they like that uh Let's see. Uh, Kelly, anything else you noticed in this one? Obviously, the teacups. You like that. Anything else you noticed you, you liked? No. I just noticed the teacups. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the, the I, this uh, segment did have the segment in the episode that did make me laugh, which was just the uh, <laughs> Wacko saying he loves to throw up on the flume ride. It's like that was mm-hmm. funny. Just the build up to that was hilarious or humorous. In, in the, oh, in the animator's office. Here's some extra things. There's a Supergirl, and a Marvin the Martian, and the uh, what's the the one Lord of the Rings thing? That's a TV show on HBO of oh, the Sword Throne. This is dragons. What? This is a dragon show that was on HBO. Game <laughs> oh, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah, the Game of Thrones is a Game of Thrones poster. <laughs> you know, it's like Lord of the Rings, like Wow, Game of Thrones and things. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So there you go. That was the animator from that one episode. All right. I don't know. I feel like they're just kind of trying to throw. It. They're like, "Oh, this is gonna be our last episode, so we should throw in <laughs> as I, many characters as possible." Right. And I, I know it was nice to see the clown, but I really, obviously, that was a big disappointment from us finding out that Paul was going to be on the the episode when he posted that that video. And I was just thinking, "Oh man, I can't wait to see another." A segment featuring Mr. Director and the Warners together. That'll be so funny. And he, Paul just got to sing one verse of, well, he got, I guess, I guess it's the whole song now that I think about it. <laughs> it's a short song, but it's a great song. By the way, it's The Wind Can't Whimper, whip her Back, not Can Whip her Back. Uh, this is something that we just learned at WonderCon when they passed out the sheet music to everybody. <laughs> Um, that people were like, I was, I was surprised. I was like, wait, it's not the wind can whip her back. It's the wind can't whip her back. Huh? There. Yeah. You learn something. The more, you know, the more, you know, but even in the, in the captioning for this episode, it said the wind can whip her back. I'm like, Oh, they got to redo it. But what I really wish that they redid was they didn't, they just gave him singing credit on this one and they couldn't 
even though they just put down so many people for voicing characters, even for just a quick line of like, you know, as Ralph, I don't think Ralph says anything other than or something like that in this mm. episode. They give Frank Welker credit as voicing Ralph. It's like, Paul, I, I don't understand why they couldn't just give him proper credit. Um, I actually remember talking on Twitter to Gabe Zwar about it, and he responded that it really wasn't a big deal. He was only in there for a little bit of time and brushed it off like that. And I don't know. I just think it's a little... Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people that are in it for a very little amount of time and that are credited. Yeah. And like for, when when Starbucks is making noises and things like that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, they're just making little noises. We don't need a credit Danny Jacobs to. And it's like, no. So like Danny Jacobs is credited in this episode for his <laughs> said that once, maybe when he's getting sucked into the thing. Like, yep. He, yeah, here we go. I don't know. It's just it's weird. And um, yeah. And it just seems it just seems wrong to me. It just doesn't seem it just just seems to me like you got to put Paul in, especially as a fan of the show. Like that was a big moment, but for someone like Gabe Zwar, who was not a fan of the show growing up, um, it was, it felt like it will attack this on for the people. And well, Paul's not really involved in the show that much. So let's just put him in as a singer kind of thing. Now, whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. I doubt it, but it just kind of felt that way. Yeah, and, I mean, maybe you get paid more as a singer anyway, so maybe it's just like... I don't so know. I, I don't know what the things are. Yeah, I'm weird. sure that has something to do with it as well. That's for the Warner Brother lawyers to worry about, not me. And obviously, they're not worried at all about it. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and move to... Here we go. We did a thing. We started a thing, Slappy in 2020. Remember that hashtag we started out years ago before the reboot even came out? Well, we finally got it in 2023. Ah. Slappy's, Slappy's return. Would you knock it off already? Can't you see I'm trying to retire in peace? Slappy's return was written by James Butler, Lucas Crandall's, and Timothy Nash, and it was directed by Adriel Garcia. And this, it's, hey, it's outside Slappy's house. There's a bunch of people saying, we want Slappy, we want Slappy. And Slappy is asleep. Skippy may or may not be in the house someplace, sleeping, but we don't know. But she, back to she comes out of the house and she tells everyone to shut up, and she's she's retired. Why can't they see that? And she's you know gets upset at them for sending her all these letters. Who sends letters anymore these days? And then she says her big joke, which is I always thought you were crazy, but now I know you're just plain nuts, and. That makes everybody say, oh, she still got it. And they laugh more. And then she says, for the love of Pete Puma, which honestly, I think that was funnier to me than anything that she said with that. Uh, and that's it. She clo- shows, shuts the door. And um, yeah, this was a last minute edition. Uh, according to Gabe's War, this was a last minute edition. And you could kind of tell because I think they did. This is what the 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 reboot did they finally did the impossible they made slappy squirrel unfunny so <coughs> they said it couldn't be done but they did it no that was mean but for me true uh what did you guys think about this slappy the squirrel segment that we waited for for so long uh kelly let's start with you i i did not laugh um, it was cool to see Slappy again, but it, I mean, it was just, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, uh, I had already thought like the episode had ended like, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the big bang after the teacup yeah. thing. So I was kind of surprised that the episode kept going. Cause I thought that was it. And so then, um. And then when I saw Slappy, I was like, oh, I forgot that she was supposed to be in this. And, um, but it was just, it was like kind of a message to the fans. Like you wanted her here, take her, you know, yeah. like it wasn't, um, yeah, I, I just, I just didn't find it all that funny. Yeah. It really did kind of feel like the writer saying, fine, shut up <laughs> here. You like, like. 
look, she's retired. That's why she wasn't here. It's like, no, she wasn't there because you guys didn't think Slappy Squirrel is that funny to begin with. And you underestimated the popularity. The, Woodstock the that, Slappy is the funniest thing uh, ever. It's And Slappy is a character. Her and Skippy were, I mean, to me, it's not. Bumby's mom is hysterical. I I think I like the ones with Skippy better. I mean, it's because mm-hmm. not all of them have Skippy, but man, Bumby's mom at Woodstock Slappy slap. <laughs> They're so funny. <laughs> They're so funny. There's like there's uh, to me there's like basically three pillars, three main pillars of Animaniacs. You got the Warners, you got Pinky the Brain, you got Slappy and Skippy, right? And then of course you have the other fun stuff like Good Feathers and Mindy Buttons and maybe even the Hip Hippos for a, a moment or two. But or maybe I would I'd probably put like the good idea, bad ideas or something like that as a, a nice little support <laughs> as well. There's so many different things that made like the classic Animaniacs f- so much fun. But Skippy and Slappy were definitely one of those things. And to finally, finally see Slappy as a way of saying, will you just stop it already? Fine. I was in the episode like it, it kind of felt like quit your bitching. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, that's not funny. Thanks, mm-hmm. but not, no thanks. I could have done without this Slappy, honestly. As much as it was nice to finally see Slappy, I, I would rather have seen, not seen her at all. That's why I always tell people, because, uh, you know, like I, I follow this Facebook group about Sequest. You know, I loved Sequest when it first came out, like the first season. Yeah. And then it kind of went downhill, but but I loved it. And it was a Spielberg executive produced show. But um, people keep talking about, oh, we want Sequest back. And, you know, of course, Rory Scheider's gone. Jonathan Brandis is gone. Um, they retooled the show so it wasn't even resembling its first season. And it's like, yeah, be be careful what you wish for. Like, you think right. you want it, but do you really want it? Because it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be. Um, I mean, it's like, you know, we've talked before ad nauseum about star wars and the sequels and you know so many people got so excited when they announced the new disney trilogy but then they hated it because it wasn't as good as the prequels which the original fans didn't like the prequels you know they waited 20 years and it's like yeah we don't like it and um so it kind of depends on where you are and when the movies hit you and and things like that because you know sometimes uh, Things have a greater impact maybe if you're watching it as an adult or if you're watching it as a kid, but it's not going to be the same vice versa. I mean, well, you can't go backwards in time, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes when you watch something when you're a kid, it's just not going to hit the same when you're an adult. Yeah. And so, even if it is good or even if it is funny and um, and well done, I mean, sometimes it's just not going to hit the same. Yeah. It kind of, well, it feels like, you know, if you ask a band, if you're, if, if, even if a band has the same instruments, uh, you know, they have a guitar and they have the drums and everything like that, and the the lead singer is the same, maybe even or something like that. Um, if you ask the band to play a classic hit that you're they're used to, they could try to play it, but it's not going to sound as good. Kind of felt like what was going on right here. It's like, well, you got Sherry Stoner to do the thing. But if you don't have the right people behind the um, the the writing of it, it's not going to feel the same. And this didn't feel the same to me at all. Uh, it did it did feel like tacked on, and I really kind of felt like as nice as it was again to see Slappy. I mean, I liked her appearance more in the cameos <laughs> that we got of her uh, than in this even because she at least she wasn't yelling at me <laughs> for how <laughs> dare I <laughs> ask her to come back. Um, well, you felt attacked. I don't know. I know. Oh, Nathan, what did you think? Um, I I don't know. I liked it. I thought I was happy to see uh, Slappy Squirrel back. You know, um, she wearing dentures. She still looks great. She still sounds great. <laughs> um, I liked her little quip about who writes letters these days. I'm wondering if people actually did write letters, and I hope they did. And very overwhelmed by letters in that <laughs> in their office, and I'm like, yeah, see, this is what the people want. And that made me happy. And that's why. So I thought it was like, okay, there you go. And to bring back Sherry Stoner there, I was happy to see that. So, um, you know, I, w- I guess I would want a longer episode in an ideal world, have Skippy there, have, you know, but it's like, you know, I'll take what I can get. And I think it was an improvement to the episode segment. 
or you know this the, to this episode I yeah think at a whole as a whole having, yeah i think yeah. having slappy made this episode better is my thought so well there we go that was our slappy um wish we got more but then again maybe i don't wish we got more but just <laughs> we'll never know uh let's go ahead this is it this is it Let's go ahead and talk about everyday safety. Giant Adirondack chair. Safety. You can't live without it, but not for very long. Oh my goodness! I thought that, that was the last segment for some. I mean, I watched I watched the Adirondack chair, but as we're talking, like I this. Episode had so many segments. Like I keep thinking lots we're at the of end. Segments. Lots of segments. Clearly, lots but of segments. Three like, more. It's also like ten o'clock my time, so I'm like, let's wrap this up. But <laughs> we're almost there. Any, anyway, but yeah, I forgot about the Adirondack <laughs> segment. <laughs> we're almost there. We're almost there. Uh, Everyday Safety was written by Kathleen Chen, Brian Polk, and Wellesley Wild, and was directed by Brett Varon. Uh, Nathan, what happens here? Basically, I don't think you need to go through every single step. Of this <laughs> I'm going to go through every single. Oh step. no! <laughs> um, so yeah, this is an, a continuation of the everyday safety cartoon, which we've we've seen that one before at some point. Um, uh, that was the 15th episode of season two, or something like that. Uh, so Yak and Wacko dot find themselves on a giant Adirondack chair, and. These are the things you need. You need a saw, a sunblock, a map, a guitar, a best-selling business book, a gallon of hair growth formula. And basically, you want to put the uh, sunblock on the chair so then when you slip off the thing, and then the hawks will try to chase you. So you cut, use the saw to make a conference table, and then you have a conference with the hawks that are trying to eat you uh, by singing them a song first. And then you use the book from the best-selling author to uh, win the argument of the hawks, and then they decide to be... Uh, your slaves or something and then they're gonna you take the map and circle your location send it out and then billionaires come with uh, lots of money you put on some hair growth formula you grow long hair everyone gets caught in the hair so that the uh, millionaire with a candy store brings his candy helicopter to save everyone um, and then the hair falls out Everyone falls off except the Warners, but Wacko then eats the helicopter because it's made of a candy cane and they crash and an asteroid kills them all. The end. Wow. I think, yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, that is pretty much everything. I guess the main thing is that they say like, oh, we're not going to die. No, we're going to die. And they have a callback. I think the biggest reference, I think, is a callback to the first few lines of the reboot, which is there's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of pressure riding on our first lines. And in this, they say there's a lot of pressure. And, oh, like this, and bloom, they're dead. The end. Um, obviously, when this episode first hit, that was – it was a much bigger story. Of, and I think a lot of the outrage of people going, they did what now? Um, obviously, this is kind of like, I think, what the – People, uh, Gabe Swar, Wellesley Wild, and everybody else perhaps wanted to do was make this a cliffhanger so that they could mm-hmm. get renewed. And surely this would get the people uh, so you know upset. And they well, well, they can't cancel the show. We need it back now to see that the Warners are alive. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen for. I think it backfired perhaps and it may be made people more upset at the creators of the show than anything of how could they have done that instead of please Hulu bring them back so we could see what happens so that they survive. I, I will say when I was in Des Moines, I was in, no, it was in WonderCon. This, so it was in March when this had come out and I was hearing Tom talking to Paul about this particular moment. He's like, Hey Paul, did you hear what happens? They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> And he's and they're just like what? It just it was a shocking kind of ending. Like that's what you do. So I decided just now to look at like the the original how you wrap up a series. Even if you think like, well, you know, we'd love to do more, but episode ninety nine of the original Animaniacs here, you started with newsreel of the stars, and then you had an extended theme song. Again, you start with newsreel of the stars. 
you have that extended theme song to kind of really give as much as you can. You get to see the the birds on the wire where you show the feel like feathers. It was, it was kind of like they're running out of shots, so they're just like, we've got to use the extended one, use newsreel, because yeah. we only have but, but at the same time, episode. it kind of meant we felt like, you know what, <laughs> one last time. You know what I yeah. mean? There was a sense of finality to it. Birds on a Wire, which was probably kind of sitting around, uh, had a mm-hmm. nice – it was a cute, like, we're, we're wrapping things up, we're saying goodbye. It had a, you know, a sweetness to it. And then we had the scoring session, which may yeah. not be the best Animaniacs cartoon, but you got to see all of the cast playing different parts and, mm-hmm. and kind of pinpointing like, oh, there's, you know, Hello Nurse, there's, you know, Slappy playing instruments and so on. Every single character was featured in some way. And then, of course, it wraps up with a, a set. This is just a celebration of the show with the Animaniacs suite uh, composed by Richard Stone and uh, just uh, just a wonderful piece of music just showing all the things celebrating the whole series and then in the credits saying we'd like to thank everybody what are, what is these, the exact quote a special thank you to all those who have contributed to the success of animaniacs and of course just wait until episode 100 just wait and wait and wait <laughs> got nothing <laughs> none of that kind of but that was like it, it you kind of felt like a uh a melancholy feeling at the end of like, oh, this show is ending, and I and and we we would continue on with like Wacko's Wish and, and yeah, Wacko's like Wish is kind of like an episode one hundred ish, right? Kind of exactly, thing. and yeah. the, and of course the thought the thought was I think if Wacko's Wish was a little bit more popular, it probably would have done additional spin off movies and stuff like that. Whereas mm-hmm. this is like, look, you either give us what we want or they're di- like we're throwing we're everything away. The we're burning Gabe's, this place to the ground. <laughs> Gabe Squar does say in some tweets that like the Warners did survive. So if there are listeners that are worried, the Warners are okay. According to Gabe Squar, <laughs> they're fine. They're so, fine. They're fine. Um, just I look mean, bad. It, it just but, uh, it's just upsetting when I see and this is and this show is not the only show that has done this, you know. And but these kind of cliffhanger things is a way to try to like. I remember the ending of Alf. Had a very similar ending. With I was Alf. just thinking about that. <laughs> God, it was the most upsetting ending because I knew Alf was going to be ending, right? But obviously, the people who, and I think NBC announced it had been canceled, and the writers were though were very much doing kind of this protest ending where they're going to like have Alf be uh, abducted by the F the uh, CIA or something like that at the very end, and it's a very cliffhanger ending, and you think, oh no, what's going to happen to Alf? And then you never, the show never came back. Now it did come back with like a, I think a TV movie, and you got to see Alf like in escape Area from, Fifty, yeah, Escape yeah. from Area Fifty One, which was a humorous thing. But that took like five or ten years, I think, before they got to that. So, look, it, I get it. I was it, thinking, but the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs, I think, oh, was horrible. horrible. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, here's the thing. The best ending, if they were going to end this episode on a, like, have everybody sucked up and have Dot say, talk about going out with a bang. And have well, that be like, your... Like I said, that's where I thought it was going to end yeah. originally. Um, and then I was like, no, there's still like 10 more minutes left. <laughs> and, and instead, they just keep going. And then I, I understand the the way to, like, you know, have the rhyming stanza of, well, we started the reboot with this line. Let's end it with this line. But... That's how you're ending it. That's how you're choosing to essentially. No, it, it's so. It makes me so disappointed. Yeah. What would the perfect ending line be for you, Joey? This was all be, a bad dream. It'd be good night, everybody. And then <laughs> good night, everybody. Uh, yeah. No, I look. okay. Love you. Bye bye. I like goodbye, yeah. nurse. They all uh, like it's a. They go. <laughs> whoop, 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 and then their classic Warners have had a nightmare and they wake up and they go, ah, 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 oh my gosh, I just had a bad dream. And it's the hand. And then the clown's animation. right next to him. And then and they, they scream, go, ah, and, and, yeah. And, and then, then they cut the credits. And then they play. End. No, and then you had the water tower attack. And then the water tower gag ending. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, this look, I know that I come off on this show as mean. These are my opinions. These are just our opinions. And if you love this 
the reboot series and everything like that. I'm glad. <laughs> I don't want yeah. to take that away. None of us want to take anything away from anybody who really enjoyed things about the series. It's just that this, and especially even the last few seconds of this, go back to my biggest criticism of this series as a whole, is that it's just mean-spirited. It just feels, I don't have fun with it like I used to. Like the original series, it's silly and goofy and yeah, it's kind of stupid from time to time. But you know what? It's kind of, kind of like watching real kids run around. You kind of go, oh, those are stupid. That's, I didn't think those kids were that funny. But boy, oh, boy, they were having fun running around the room for a while, weren't they? That's kind of amusing. And Whereas this, it's like, boy, they're all just sarcastic little critters. And now everything's dead. <laughs> so there, good night. <laughs> and that's the, that's the note they, they leave this reboot on. I was not a fan. I made me made me very disappointed and but not shocked. I kind of felt like, yeah, that seems par for the course for these writers that this is how they decided they were going to end their uh reign of error. Oh, no. <laughs> you are mean. I'm being mean today. <laughs> um but the thing is I'm I'm just so I'm just so I'm so sad that this show was, and I I try to be as, as nice as I can with it, but I just I I darn it I really wish that it was I just wanted it to be funnier than it was, and I'm very upset that the way, the way they decided to end it, and just be just be nice at the end, <laughs> uh, and when you're not nice, it makes me angry, and then I get mean. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know. What did you guys think? Is there anything that like I need some I need some positive things about this uh, last segment? Is there anything in it that I that I should have liked in this one that uh, that you liked? Uh, there was a character that kind of looked like Weird Al Yankovic. I thought I don't think it was supposed to be. But he <laughs> oh, I, like didn't, one of the, I didn't notice one of the that. Millionaires had big, those, really hair. And, guys yeah, looking and, for Elon Musk. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a lot of like. The uh, the the being silent to the Hawks, uh, I kind of like that scene. You know, yeah. the Hawks are just like, uh, I guess we'll sign, uh, give a give your life away. The like, his name is also, was his name also Joe? It was I forgot what his name was, um, Jared or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. Justin, I think that sounds Justin right. the Hawk. Um, so we, he has a, he has a name, and yeah, they're like, all right. Uh, I like that. I thought that was cute. And um, I, I I wonder if the tacked on part was the whole uh, asteroid thing because that seemed like very much out of this episode. Like it seemed like almost a separate episode. So it might have been when they found out that the ep- the show was going to ca- be canceled. They wrote that whole asteroid thing. So they might have had a different ending in mind. Yeah. For the you know. Um, it's possible. You know what would have been nice? Um, you, if you just gave the Bernsteins and said, hey, can you, the Bernsteins, can you do like an Animaniacs Suite 2 or something like that? Just kind of going over like the highlights of what made this reboot cool, you know, and just yeah. like highlight the moments and the gags and stuff that were. It, it, that were I have something fun. I liked. Okay, go yeah. ahead, Kelly. So I like the title card for the everything safety thing um, because it gives off that whole 80s vibe. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's straight from um, like a Trapper Keeper or Saved by the Bell episode or something. And it just so nostalgic. And I love the colors. It's fun. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I like I did, the little cutaways they do each time, too, of the daughter. Yeah. I, I did like the line with Wacko saying, uh, can you can you live without safety? Well, not long or something like that. Um, something along those lines. Mm hmm. I like how Dot was like sitting underneath the the The, open scissors. scissors. (laughs) Yeah. So again, there's little moments in this that make me, but it's all it's it's covered up by the massive explosion at the end. That's (laughs) you 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 traumatize me at the end. I'm going to just talk nothing about that. Nothing else about that trauma. 
Like you don't remember much. I was like, oh, this was in that episode. Because I was like, oh yeah, I remember an asteroid happens. I was like, what else happens in that episode? And... It's like, yeah, if your friends got killed by a car, you wouldn't be talking about all oh, the great things that happened earlier in the well, day. And then they went to the grocery store <laughs> earlier in that day, though. Okay, the grocery store was great. Like, oh, but oh, then they okay. got hit by a car. No, I'm not <laughs> gonna talk. It's like I'm gonna focus on the bad part. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, we're just going to wrap our thoughts and give our uh, water tower rating and stuff. But I think I should just quickly, as quickly as possible, just kind of get some uh, thoughts from our readers because, uh, you know, they might have some thoughts of this uh, thing that we didn't think about. So I'm going to go to the cartoon gamer. He's one of our patrons and says, uh, so the ending of the final episode was a bit of a letdown. They just kind of die, I guess. <laughs> but without <laughs> writing a whole essay on it, I quite enjoyed the reboot. Yeah, there were some aspects I wasn't gelling with it, but there was a few opportunities that were missed or squandered. But when they got things right, it was a blast to watch. Uh, hearing the returning actors coming back, they got to sing a bunch of new songs, and it was great on its own. For instance, I only wish it could have gone on for a few more seasons because I'm sure they would have been able to do more with it. Uh, honestly, I don't think WB understands what they have on their hands. Animaniacs isn't even slightly close to as being milked as it should be for a 30-year-old IP. And I agree. I will also say that uh, the Cartoon Gamer made me think of another thing, is that my initial thought of the 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 this reboot was that, well, at least they're going to go back and they're going to look at like the the original series and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and while that may have been the case for some people, I don't think it necessarily did anything to help the Animaniacs franchise as a whole. Because even though the people who are listening to this episode right now are fans who probably listened to or watched every episode all the way through each one, I will say this was quite with certainty. You are not among the majority of fans of the Animaniacs. At least not that I have run into talking at cons and things like that. Um, we are the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You, I guess you should be honored that you got. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you, you, you did it. But at the same time, it's like I, most people that I talk to, and even some, you know, in person, and, and sometimes online, say, I, you know, even people who who left reviews for what did you think about this, is that most people say, well, I kind of I got through like the first season, and then like the second, and then kind of started the third, and you know, I'll come back to it. Um. That's that doesn't help the the franchise as a whole. So if in that's the case, then I don't know if this reboot really helped the, the series as a whole. That's just me. Uh, let's go ahead and move to uh, let's see. This this is final reboot thoughts, and this is from a Slappy Squirrel <laughs> Gmail account, which I won't give out the exact one because. Uh, I don't know. I don't want people to spam them. But it says, personally, the last hurrah for Slappy was the best part of the reboot. Seeing her one last time was great, even if, in my opinion, it was lackluster. What do you expect from Daily Dose of Slappy? Oh, that's what this would count as from. Daily Dose of Slappy is his comment about the Warner Sibs? Nah. That's actually a very good Twitter account. Uh, or an Instagram. Daily Dose of Slappy Squirrel. Because uh, sometimes you do need your Daily Dose of Slappy. This one right here says, rest in peace, Warners, you will be missed. Uh, it says, the reboot was a sting. It could have been better. I honestly missed the good idea, bad idea spiel. Personally, best of the series was the righteous little verse about something worse than a nurse and hello, hearse. Uh, I quote that. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> uh, but it says, you will be missed. Uh, rest in peace, Warner Brothers and Warner Sister named Dot. A fitting end, is it not? Question mark? I would say not. Uh, Jeffrey says, while the final episode started off good, I think everyday safety, giant iron rock down chair, was not the perfect way to end the reboot. In my opinion, the sticking or stickening, what was it called? The stickening or the sticking? I don't know. It should have been the stickening. stickening. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. I thought I was saying it wrong all this time. The stickening mm -hmm. should have been the final segment. It had cameos from Pinky the Brain and the reboot characters, another reference to Twister, and even had a short but enjoyable cameo from Mr. Clown. Plus, it ended with Dot saying, talk about going out with a big bang. The final yeah. shot, the entire I mean, universe gets sucked in, but yeah. I thought... But I guess who thought killing off the Warners with, with an asteroid was a perfect way to end the reboot to a beloved 90s reboot, uh, 90s animated series, which, spoiler alert, it's not. 
<laughs> um, well, it, it does Google seem like they could have ended it with slappy, like the the way it was sla- just ending it there would have also worked. You know like, what would have been really great is if they put slappy after the like the tower. It's just like almost like a, a post credit scene. Oh and yeah, really, yeah. Oh, that yeah. would have been cool. Like, it's like almost a, like to rewatch it. Like most people would have yeah. just like, nah, I never saw it. And people say, did you see slappy? And then they have to go back and watch it. Watch the episode again. Yeah. yeah. So they just had Mystery Mouse, Aliens Resurrected, Joe, and then The Stickening. And then you watch the credits, stay all the way through, because there's a little bonus look. Oh, that would have been nice. I would have liked that so much more. Yeah, that would have been awesome. And it was oh, still man. been the same slappy segment, but I would have been happier. Like, ah! I was like, oh my gosh, they, like, they, did, <laughs> they did it. it. They did it. <laughs> and that and it kind of been... sets up for like another season. And we're like, oh, maybe if they did another season, maybe Slappy would be in it. And, we gotta and get... I think that's the thing. You, you create the demand for it yeah. by doing that not just saying like you were saying Nathan burning the place down <laughs> yeah. like if we if we can't have him back nobody can have him back uh it just doesn't feel right uh well i think there's just uh let's see i think that's pretty much it from our uh, there's you know some additional folks on twitter and facebook and stuff that if you're and feel free to leave comments there we can have conversations on those social media platforms as needed um but yeah let's go ahead and get to our water tower rating. Well, out of five water towers, how many would you give this episode, the last episode that we know of, of the of the Animaniacs reboot? Uh, Kelly, why don't we start with you? Uh, I'm going to give it four because of the spinning teacups and how much Dot loves them, and I, I relate to that. And because I felt like I was watching myself in the cartoon and it was good seeing the clown and the whippoorwill song. I liked it. Um, so and like I said, it was nice and slappy, although I, I think one of the the listeners said it, it was lackluster, but it was good to see her and hear Sherry Stoner again. Um, so, I mean, there was just so much in this episode. So there was a lot. To like i guess and then there was a lot that maybe we didn't like so much but but i really liked the teacup stuff and i i really think we they, they should have just ended with that that episode i mean i'm sorry that segment like yeah like everybody's been mm-hmm. saying but no it was just fun and i i liked the animation of it it was just it, it made me want to go back to disney and i i was only there like a month ago <laughs> so all right well nathan what do you think um, I'm going to give it a uh, three, I think. I'm going to say three. That's what I wrote originally. Um, it's, yeah, I, I appreciated seeing Slappy and Mr. Clown. These are the things that I knew were going to be in the episode, but it's still nice to see him uh, anyways. And yeah, I mean, it's, um, I do wish there was a better ending, of, you know, to the show, but, you know, I'll take it. You know, at least uh, there's no more episodes. <laughs> three, there you go. Uh, uh, three, three, yeah. Uh, well, I I don't think it's any surprise to anybody who's listened this far into the episode. I'm going to go lower than these two. I'm going to go to... What? You always <laughs> go lower than us. You're going to go to... not true. Last week I went higher. That's, That's true. true. Yeah. Mostly you, you go lower than Mostly us. I go because you love Christmas. Or you tie with us. I'm looking at... That's it's, true. See, true yeah it's uh, mostly true it's mostly true that's true <laughs> not always though uh I, yeah i mean like for all the reasons that it had it had those moments but it just was yeah it it, it 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 was at times uh disappointing and at other times aggravating so <laughs> a two for me and again overall most importantly i I had one moment where I laughed and I wish I laughed more and I just didn't. I just felt sad when I was done with this sad and confused, which is not a, a feelings that you want to have after a, a, any episode of Animaniacs, I think. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get to our contact information. Nathan, where can people find you on? Oh, Joey, I'm on Twitter. I mean, X, I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, Django FT. That's where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what about you? I'm also on Twitter X, uh, Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S. All right. Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, uh, podcast players, all that jazz. We're on a lot of it. Check it out, folks. 
follow us wherever you like uh, subscribe to us wherever you'd like and uh hey head on over to retrozap.com we're a proud member of retrozap's podcast community and there's lots of stuff on retrozap every single day we had a little bit of a problem recently with retrozap's uh uh, the site went down. Oh, I got so many people so yeah, upset with me. I was so confused about that too. I was going to ask him, like, do we have a website? Still? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, but it's back up. It's back running and stronger and better than ever. So don't you worry, folks. Animatingcast.com will take you right over to the Retro Zap archives right there. All of our episodes. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated. I'm a people, man.